<clears throat> hey everybody, happy uh, Monday afternoon. Uh, for some of you, it might be a little bit later. Can everybody hear me okay? Okay, sounds good. Uh, Dr. K is supposed to be on. Uh, it is midnight in London, so you know he could have gotten lost in a bar, but uh, maybe he'll show up at some point. He is supposed to be here, so I'm expecting him shortly. Um, uh-oh, something happened here. Just give me one second here while I bring up my HCS investor. Here we go. <clears throat> you can see uh, today the, the Dow made a uh, actually an intraday high, and you can see that here on this chart of the Dow. Uh, but it uh, closed up for the day, but it didn't quite make it. Volume was uh, slightly lower, is what it looks like here. And uh, on the Nasdaq, a little bit different picture here. You can see. Remember last week, uh, for those of you who are in the chat room, I was shorting the market here on Monday, right off the peak, and it broke down very hard, and by Thursday morning, you pretty much washed everything out. So before the selling became really obvious to everybody, you already had stocks coming down for four, five, six days in some cases, and the volume was very uh, brutal in, in some of them. I mean, they smacked some of these stocks very hard. You've had some kind of snap back, some not really snap back over the last couple, three days. Um, but you can see here that NASDAQ, we gapped up this morning. You know, now Portugal isn't a problem. Uh, Citigroup settled with the, uh, the U.S. government, uh, with the Justice Department for uh, you know, making bad loans and whatnot. Uh, and so you had uh, pretty much uh, a good, not, good news, not, not really bad news, but the bad news on Thursday kind of dissipated. And that gives the market a reason to rally. But what you see on the NASDAQ is you've gapped up here on heavier volume, but you basically churned around here. And I'm not really sure what to think. My general view is that you've had the big move from here. This is really the turn. And, and right around here, you saw a lot of pocket pivots in, in leading stocks or, or stock, leading stocks that had been correcting were coming up the right sides of their bases. And I think this is a point to really get in. If you ran those up, now you're up in here, you're getting obvious, uh, everybody wants to get into the market, everything looks beautiful, uh, and things slow down. And, and so you have profit, uh, profits maybe 15, 20, 25 percent in some of these names, like say SunPower, maybe you had 10, 15 percent profit in Tesla. And I will take profits and it naturally forces me out of these names before the market gets into trouble. The other thing was we were talking about this 5 to 6 percent past the 50-day moving average. And it worked again, that, that basic idea of the upper band being an area of resistance from which the market will pull back. And usually when you get there, you're seeing a lot of leading stocks extended. So <clears throat> it was natural, I think, for a pullback to occur. Now, you know, right now I'm actually having the best first half of any year in my career, uh, up to mid double digits right now, and mostly in cash, pretty much all in cash, I would have to say, I mean, on a practical basis. Uh, nothing really big to speak of in terms of positions. And I think at this point, you're, you're kind of hanging out waiting to see what happens here because we did see a lot of leading stocks get whacked. And it's not really clear to me right now what's coming back. We'll get to that in just a second as I run through some charts. But you could go back and forth here for a period of time. I remember last year, uh, July, second half of July or early part of August was pretty nondescript. I think you had uh, a couple days where you had a sell-off and the market came back out of it. Um, and we started a new rally in August, and that was timed perfectly with when I got out of the hospital, and I was able to make some money pretty quick. And last year, I finished around mid-double digits, uh, a little better than that maybe. Um, and most of that was made between uh, the end of August and the end of the year. So, you know, to be up as much as I am so far this year, and we're pushing through July, my view is that I can kind of lay back and see how things develop, see if we get some rotation here into some new leadership, and push that way. So for the most part, I'm not really in, in the mood to start taking a lot of risk uh, in this position. I did make some nice money short, but I covered on this day on Thursday, which was an exhaustion gap, I thought. And you could kind of figure that out. Let's go to some charts of stocks uh, real quick. Let's see. What do I got going here? Oh, we'll come up with another. Let me pull up a new, new charting window. Um, <clears throat> And you can see here, uh, 
look at, say, Panop, uh, Palo Alto Networks. I want to say Panoptics. I don't know why. But uh, see how this broke down, and, and it went down to the 65-day 65, 65 exponential, the black line here. And then you, uh, on Friday, you tested that, retested that, and kind of bounced off the 50-day. But you're not getting any volume here. And this thing got whacked very badly right off the bat right there. The same thing with uh, stocks like Yelp, uh, Data. These are stocks I was shorting on Monday. Uh, because they look like they were in potential right shoulder uh, rollovers. And I didn't really know at the time that that was how they were going to turn out. But I do know from experience that, you know, these things will set up. And uh, let me pull up a weekly heart chart here. We're going to pull up a bunch of chart views here. Let's see. We'll go to a weekly chart here. You can see here, like in, in uh, data, for example, right in here, you're into the 200-day or 40-week moving average. And that looks like a big, ugly head and shoulders and so I'm looking at this on Monday and I'm kind of coming to the conclusion that maybe it's run up you had some stalling and I just go ahead and short it and the thing blows apart for me so things don't always work that perfectly but I was trying to anticipate that based on what I was seeing and, and several other factors uh, that leading stocks had run up a fair bit since the market turn in, in the latter part of May and uh, some of these bottom fishing pocket pivots, they worked for a little bit, but then they run into trouble. You can see here, Yelp, same thing. Uh, this could be a left shoulder. This could be a big, ugly head, and now you, you get a right shoulder. But the other thing I was noticing on these weeklies is you are stalling here. You see that? Let me blow that up. But you can see the stalling in here. So you get that. Uh, Workday was another one. Same situation here. A little bit of stalling as it's moving up. But again, left shoulder, big, ugly head and a right shoulder. And some of these may uh, be turning out uh, to be almost, well, starting to, let's say, starting to ripen as head and shoulders uh, type setups. And I think this uh, gives you a pretty good clue now that you're hanging along the 10-week, you're, you're underneath the 40-week. The, uh, These could become short sale targets if the market gets into some trouble. So I have this in the back of my mind uh, in terms of what I want to be uh, looking at in the market. So I'm, I'm not, I, I don't have a bearish view here. I don't have a bullish view. I'm just looking at individual setups and seeing where we might be uh, in the rally and whether we might have a pullback. So it's uh, not not exactly uh, you know a clear black and white sort of picture right now, but that's fine because I've made a bunch of money and hopefully a number of you have as well. And you know we could all take a vacation. I'm I'm actually leaving on vacation tomorrow, so uh, <clears throat> before the market closes. So I don't plan on having any positions uh, necessarily. We'll see how that goes. But uh, I don't really think you're going to see too much happen here. I think on the indexes, we go back to the NASDAQ here. Um, you know, you could chop sideways. The Dow looks pretty good. Another index that I think is very uh, useful in here. Do they have it? Let's see. Let me, let's go here. Major market index components. This uh, broader S&P 1500 index. And this gives you a picture of what the broader market is doing. It's 1500 stocks in the S&P. And this is an uh, index you can find on uh, HDS Investor Software. One of the things I like about it as well. And you do get a better picture of what's going on with the broader market. Okay, And you can see this is sell-off off the peak here. But notice while you see a better rally in the Dow and, and the S&P, I'm sure if we pull up, let's take a look at, I'll, I'll use the SPY as a, uh, let's see if I can figure out which one I'm at. Here we go. Uh, I'll use the SPY as my substitute for the S&P. Same situation with the NASDAQ. You get a gap up and you can see how it's churning in here. Um, for those of you who are visually challenged and need reading glasses like me, uh, you can see that right there. So you basically have this, uh, it's lighter volume today, you, you jack up uh, and you churn. And so that that's a little bit suspect on the heels of all this stuff. And so it seems to me you might back and fill a little bit. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, but if you go back, let's go back to this um, S&P 1500. You can see that the broader market broke down, but it really hasn't bounced. Okay, so you, you've got a situation where I think you could you're weaker than you look uh, in some of the uh, indexes, and the broader market is a little more, uh, shall we say, weak uh, underneath the surface here. So that that's kind of what I'm seeing here as well. Okay, so we can come to some conclusions that it's not so hot. It's not as hot as you might think on the pullback, and you want to come flying in and buying everything that's uh, pulling back. I want to go through a couple of my favorite lists here. Let's go uh, all securities, and we'll look at, actually, what we'll do is we'll pull up this. 
This is the uh, stocks and the groups moving to the upside list. I don't know if you can see this very well. The type's pretty small. But uh, you can see uh, I rank them by ERG. So the ERG is the uh, earnings uh, EPS rank, relative strength rank, and the group rank together. And uh, rank them from the highest to the, to the lowest. This Pacific Ethanol is one that I've actually liked for a while. I've played it on some moves. Here you had pocket pivots in here. Um, Dr. Head's not really liked it, so we have never put out an alert on it. But, you know, you had a big move on it today, and as far as I was concerned, it was looking pretty good. A little slow, but it's moving with the rest of the uh, uh, ethanol stocks. You had this Green Plains Renewable Energy, another one, GPRE, uh, also moving up pretty good. And uh, they come out with earnings at the end of uh, the month. Here's where they show you the... Uh, date that earnings are are due and these actually I found are accurate numbers the ones that you'll see on market smith are not often or they put a little e because they're estimating I don't know why they can't get the correct date but this is uh, in my experience pretty accurate so you can kind of rely on it um, Trinity Industries, this is in the same group as uh, GBX, Greenbrier. I like Greenbrier. I think it's acting okay. We'll look at that in a little bit. But this E-House, EJ, uh, this, uh, I, I guess this is like a, uh, what is this, like a um, Chinese Trulia or something like that. Uh, you can see you had a pocket pivot here coming up off of the 10-day uh, moving average. You're above the 50-day, and you're coming up to the 65-day exponential. But you're below the the uh, 40-week moving average. If we look at this on a uh, weekly chart, you know, that's not, you can see on a weekly chart, that doesn't look so hot. If you look at it you know, this way, you can see it as uh, a head and shoulders in the making. So that, that this doesn't get me excited. And I'm less uh, interested in buying these roundabout or bottom fishing pocket pivots that are occurring now because the ones that will work the best are the ones that occur as the market is turning. The market's up and it's extended to the upside and now it's pulling back after getting 5-6% past the 50-day moving average on the NASDAQ and the S&P. And so these uh, later ones are not what I'm interested in buying. I'm, I'm watching some of the stocks that have, that have moved up and which are acting pretty tight in here. So th this doesn't really get me excited. But just continuing through the, this list, which I think is a pretty valuable list, you can see there some stocks are acting okay. Micron, trucking along. Um, Triangle Petroleum had a pocket pivot in here. They come out with earnings first week of August. Uh, I'm sorry, September, 9-8. And uh, that's acting okay. Some of the oils have pulled back and are trying to find their feet here. Uh, VIP Shops, I remember somebody wanted to short this one down in here, and I guess they were a little bit, you know, great minds, I guess, are ahead of their time, and, and it did come back in, but it's holding on top of this uh, cup with handle breakout, so you can see the top here, and it pulls back, and it's, it's holding there, but it's not really going anywhere. Um, Pilgrim's Pride's been moving up, Post Marriott Financial Trust acting well today, CBRE Group, Gen Therm has been acting okay, uh, a little extended here for a pocket pivot, however. Uh, Motor Car Parts of America. MPAA. This has got to be a thin name here. Let me check this. 294,000 shares is what it trades, so it's pretty light. Um, didn't quite have a pocket pivot. Actavis, we've seen this one before, uh, and it has had some pocket pivots down in here, but it's basically working on a handle. So it tried to break out here, and of course that doesn't work, and that's generally the case with most breakouts. That's fun. I'm not really interested in. Here's Bonanza Creek. I think this is a, a strong energy stock. It pulled down to the uh, uh, just underneath the 20-day, and it's back up on top. No pocket pivots, but it's hanging in there. Earnings come out, however, uh, on uh, August 14th, so not sure whether it's going to go anywhere between now and then. My general feeling as we go through earnings is that you can rely on concrete buy points in the form of viable gap-ups once companies announce earnings rather than trying to play earnings roulette and sit through an earnings report. If you have a stock where you have a you know, 15 20 25% position and you don't mind seeing that disappear in the event of a bad earnings report, I guess you could go ahead and hold it. But for my money, being up like I am, I'm more uh, apt to just take the profit and back away and look where I can start fresh in a low-risk uh, position. So airlines uh, trying to turn around. You see uh, Southwest Airlines bouncing off the 50-day. Uh, Greenbrier, this is, uh, I think, related to Trinity Industries and make railroad cars. Uh, and they make a special tanker car that's being used for oil and gas, and so that's been benefiting. But here's the gap up on uh, 
earnings and you're holding up very tightly. You can see the 10 day. I wouldn't be surprised to see it pull into the 10 day. You had a little pickup in volume today. Uh, I traded this one today out the lows and it, you know, I'm interested in this one if the market uh, is able to find its feet. But as I was pointing out earlier when we're looking at all the indexes, including that S&P 1500, I'm not so sure. And, uh, that, and that's fine. I don't have to be. So I'm, I'm cautionary here. Um, let's see. Sanderson Farms, Comcast, uh, Charter. I'm just looking for something that gets my, uh, my Latin blood boiling here. Kodiak Oil. I don't know if you call that a Bible gap. A small stock is moving up with oils. Had a nice move today. There must have been some news. Uh, if you want to buy that as a Bible gap up, I guess you can. And the low would be uh, 1465 would be your stop. There was one I thought was interesting as a trade this morning. It was in Candy, KNDI. Um, and it was up about a buck earlier this morning, and, and I thought it could be bought there, and it ended up further than that. So that stock looked pretty good. I think it's in here. But you see uh, Union Pacific hanging in there pretty well. Um, Bid Auto, uh, no pocket pivots in here. This is a very erratic stock, Chinese stock. I think it's probably, uh, I don't know if it was moving today on the news that China is going to mandate that 30% of all cars be electric vehicles. That's what got Tesla going and the KNDI. But uh, this thing's extended. There's no buy points in here, so no way to buy this one. And, I, and in my view, it's it's too squirrely of a stock. I don't really care for it. Um, oh, okay. Somebody tells me KOG was a buyout by Whiting Petroleum. And WLL Whiting, they had a, a buyable gap up today. Uh, here's this EJ. O'Reilly uh, Automotive, you can see, is trying to hang in there, uh, doing okay. I don't know if this no, is expended for a pocket pivot. Tyson Foods, uh, Perigo, that's a big, ugly move to the upside. Kind of V-shaped, don't really like that. Altria, Myriad Genetics, uh, had, some, had a pocket pivot actually right here. You can see that right here. Um, let's see if I can get my uh, crosshair. Yeah, here we go. So you had it right here. And now you get a move up through the highs of the silver range. That, that doesn't look too bad. It's also a squirrely biotech. Reynolds, uh, Tesla tried to come out today. Didn't quite make it uh, on a pocket pivot. But I would note that you did find support at the 65-day exponential. My guess is that it coincides with the, it's probably bouncing off the 10-week line. Yeah, you can see that. It bounced right off the 10-week line on the, uh, weekly chart here and if you look at this it's it's forming a cup with handle here so you got your cup and you're forming a handle it's probably not going to be resolved until uh, earnings come out so you know my feeling is maybe you'd get a buyable gap up uh, on earnings and you could come in and, and take some stock there I sense hey, Dr. I K. Am here. How is it? Uh, how is everything? <laughs> um, fine I'm just, just in the back. middle of uh, going through some stocks uh, running a screen and uh, I got it going. What are you at? You out in the town tonight? I uh, was, and um, yeah, uh, actually a uh, um, a very special person from my uh, past uh, happened to uh, come across uh, my wavelength. So we've been uh, having a little reunion. So okay. well, that's yes. good. <laughs> well, I think uh, I good was evening. able to. Good evening. I was able to carry on well without you. So I'll go ahead and just continue, and you can interject. Uh, I'll ask some questions as we go along. But right now I'm just covering uh, the screen that I look at at the end of the day to see where things might be uh, might be finding some traction if there's some rotation. But basically going over the idea that we have extended 5 6% past the 50-day moving average on the NASDAQ and the S&P. So now you're pulling back in. And uh, today you saw a gap up in uh, the NASDAQ and the S&P, but it, they basically churned uh, around at basically where, where, they, where they opened up. And so you've got some, looks like stalling, but it looks like the market could chop around here for a while. That's kind of my take. Anyways, um, people say cheers, Dr. K. Yeah, I'm sure, uh, are you a CUI charting under the influence? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Um, I, I, yeah, you know, I think when, when it comes to charts and things that are so second nature, it, it doesn't really matter. Oh, good. Okay. So you are under the influence. Okay. Just checking. Just checking. This could be a first. Um, just uh, <laughs> I hope, hopefully that doesn't violate any SEC <laughs> regulations. Anyways, getting back to where I was, um, what's your take on Tesla? 
Well, I really like, um, I was hoping that it would hit the pocket pivot volume today, but that tells me that it's not quite ready. Um, it might need to do a little bit more work in its pattern. And you can see that uh, that might be true, especially since the last earnings season where it um, just plummeted on uh, massive volume. You know, it was off uh, more than 10% that day. So, you know, when I look at the weekly chart, it, it does strike me that it needs a little bit more work before it uh, blasts off to the, uh, you know, to new highs. Um, but I think that time is going to come. And we've got the QE um, force uh, uh, tailwind here. So I think uh, everyone should have Tesla on their watch list. And uh, right now I've got 235 as uh, my alert. But that is an adjustable alert. So ultimately I do want to see it clear uh, 244 and a half. Um, and then I might get very interested, um, especially if that coincides with the uh, pocket pivot. How about... Uh Holding it into earnings, would you buy it here and hold it cold into earnings? Well, it really all depends on what my other uh, portfolio allocations are, you know, um, and my risk tolerance levels. But yeah, I, I would have no problem holding this into earnings. The, okay. This looks pretty good. Um, the last earnings season, it wasn't, but the prior the prior season, you know, it it had a gap up. Um, I I would basically say, you know, what's what's my risk tolerance? Do I want to risk twenty five percent or more? you know, on, on um, going into earnings, the way I am, I would have no problem with that, but some people might be a little bit more conservative. So you've got to ask yourself what uh, what's permissible based my, on... My uh, thinking is you could just wait and see if you get a viable gap up after earnings. That's a possibility. Yeah, I mean, you, cer you certainly could, but um, what I would like to see is uh, a pocket pivot before that happens. Um, and today we didn't quite get one, but the chart's looking like it's... Um, it's it's wanting to uh, complete itself. You know, it's a little the, bit yeah. choppy in there. I mean, if you look if you look back at the prior chart, that was pretty choppy. But then you had um, a uh, a sell off, followed by a, a uh, big volume run up, and then it just went up. You know, went went to new highs from there. Mm -hmm. So you know that kind of action is very constructive. And the in the future earnings on the stock are. Um, quite pronounced so I uh, I like everything that I'm seeing and I'm expecting some sort of a some sort of a, a pocket pivot to indication <clears throat> I thought uh, today like I was showing on the weekly chart you could look at uh, it got support at the 10 10 week line right here so that that's why it didn't quite get down to the uh, 50 day I hit the 65 day exponential but it is uh, above average volume support off the line there it looks like to me so I think in, if you're going to try and buy into this, I guess this morning when it was down would have been the spot to, to pick it up if you wanted to. I don't, I don't know if I'd buy it in here now. So anyways, um, someone asked a question, Dr. K. In a constructive base, would you prefer to see the low on the left side or the right side? Personally, I just want to see a low, but I'm not that picky. Yeah, it, there's other factors that are more important than what you see that low. Yeah, you know, and so, then one of one of the studies I did for O'Neill was um, the number of up weeks versus down weeks on higher volume within the basing pattern. Um, that that is a uh, a telling indicator. So you obviously, you, know, you want to see more up weeks, yeah. uh, the down weeks on the high volume. Yeah, and I don't think where the low is put in. Like if you if you try to symmetrically uh, slice the uh, chart in half, like let's take this as an example. I think you would say that uh, this is occur this low is occurring in the right half of the chart, but it still has a pocket pivot and goes higher. So it doesn't matter. You don't need to get anal about that. So I think just another, you know, I don't know where you got that one from, George, but uh, maybe went to many IBD seminars. But uh, I don't I don't really see that as a factor. You can see here we have the low on the definitely on the right side of the base stock had the pocket pivot here and has proceeded higher. So it doesn't really matter. Um, now, where was I? Let's see. Hopping along here. Some other stocks acting well. Advanced Auto Parts looking okay. You saw O'Reilly is hanging in there. There's another one, uh, Ash, Ashley or something like that, uh, or Allison. Let me see. Yeah, see, that one was moving too. ALSN. But it, it, it moves up and then it pulls in. It doesn't really go anywhere. China Uni Unicom had a uh, viable gap up today. Trades by appointment, however, I believe. Let's see, 398,000 shares, not too many. Uh, Aetna, Goodyear Tire. In, let's cruise through here. I think I've looked at most of these. 
Netflix. Uh, I'm starting to wonder whether it's going to turn out to be a, a big punch bowl of death. You got a big here's here's your buy point, okay? And you form a big cup or a big punch bowl, and then you break out, and uh, that's where you know everybody's going to buy the breakout, and it fails. And now you're back up, pushing up into the 10-day moving average. It's kind of unclear. Earnings come out next week. Uh, what is that? Is that Monday, 21st? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think you just see where it goes from there. But not a name that I'm really interested in owning right now. So I think a spot to buy it, and obviously in hindsight it was, was the pocket pivot coming up to the 50-day, you know, if you were on it. Um, but, again, that was occurring when the market was turning. And I think a lot, if you're starting to look at bottom fishing pocket pivots here, uh, I think it's uh, a little late in the game. Here's QuestCore. I saw this. This is a pocket pivot. It looks like a breakout. They came out with earnings on 729, so not really sure I want to play there. That, that's a screwy one, too. It'll gap down on earnings, gap up on earnings. Uh, is someone Was there someone buying him out, though? Somebody hit, hit us on the IM there. Let me know. I thought there was some talk about that. Anyways, let's see. Acorn, Spirit. Some of these airlines, Tata Motors. You don't like that one, right, Doctor? You don't like Tata. No. Nah. You say Never Tata mind. to Tata. Uh, let's see. More exciting stuff. MasterCard, Pocket Pivot today. Do you want to buy it? Earnings at the end of the month. I don't know. Mm, I mean, the base looks all right, and you also had a Pocket Pivot on uh, Visa. Today, right. There's Visa. Well, it was kind of extended from the 10-day, but you'd call that a pocket pivot? It's extended a little bit, but, uh, yeah, I mean, b given given everything, all the context of MasterCard and the base formation, you know, that you could probably let it slide and say, you know, that was a pocket pivot. Um, MasterCard looks pretty good, and that's probably something we should put out. <clears throat> now, Dr. K, people want to know why, why there was no... Uh, Pocket pivot or Bible gap up alert on uh, KNDI. Let's see. I'm going to go to uh, all securities now. Let's see. We'll go. Yeah, the problem. The problem with KNDI um, is, first of all, it's uh, the, the earnings have been negative. They don't look particularly enticing, um, and also it's pretty thin stock. Um, but that said, you know, you don't need us to bless every single stock. I mean, it, oh, right. it's thin, but, you know, it will, it's, it's, it's trying to go the distance because it's thin. It's going to have a lot of volatility. But I would, I would play this cautiously. You know, if you bought, if you bought in earlier today, um, be very careful about taking your profits um, because <laughs> it's probably not going to just blast on out of here. So you passed on it because you didn't care much for the earnings. I didn't care for the earnings, and 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 together with the uh, you know it's pretty pretty thin stock, um, you know the market caps you know it's a it's a mini it's a micro it's a it's a small cap stock, and I'm still wary on the, this type of name. So um, there's better names out there, but again you know there we have we have markets where small caps can do very well, and but but handle them with care because they're going to be quite volatile. Uh, someone's asking about level three. I I watched this one. You had a gap up here. It doesn't really go anywhere. Uh, I don't know if it's too choppy. It's actually what it runs. It runs up and then it just goes sideways. It holds very tight. So I don't know if that's really choppy. Uh, but it's kind of boring. And they come out with earnings uh, on seven thirty. So at the end of the month. So you know I don't know if I really need to hold something like this. But it is holding in okay. It's forming. Uh, a base here, so it doesn't really look that bad. Um, I noticed some of the stocks that have been looking good. Fang has been trying to come out of this. I think this looks fine. Uh, they come out with earnings in the first week of August. Let's go here. You can see all it's doing is forming a base after running up. So watch it; it may run into the ten-week line. Uh, the BCI we're looking at—that's just coming up like this, and not really much going on here. Uh, the other one, CLR. Oops, let's go here. Um, not really. I mean, it traded not lots of volume, but not anywhere in a position to be a pocket pivot. But that does look pretty good because you're coming along these lows, and you pick up a lot of volume support. So it looks like it might want to want to get some support and turn off here. Now, the other thing to check on this is the weekly chart. So if we look there, you can actually see that it kissed the 10-week moving average. Okay. Now, and that and this brings up a good point, which is that 
when you're watching stocks come down to their 50-day moving average and you think you might want to step in and try and test the waters by buying a little bit at the line, especially if a stock hasn't really come down uh, exactly to the line. Uh, you know, we saw that with uh, Tesla uh, today as well, where it doesn't come quite, doesn't quite make it down to the 50-day, yet you see uh, it's pretty good support. And what, what's happening is it's coming at the uh, the the 10 week line and so you got to watch your weekly charts and your daily charts in real time to see where that is occurring so somebody's asking about EMES uh, I see it's slightly wedging here along the lows here so you get the decline volume but you know you're only halfway through the week or, or first day of the week rather this week so you can't really count that but let's see what it looks like on a daily chart it's it's got this gap down what do you think of this uh, this name, Dr. K. Is there any uh, exciting earnings story here? Last quarter's earnings looks like they were up 79%, uh, but they're going to announce earnings on, on the first week of August. So it's trying to hang out. You got any thoughts on this one, Dr. K? I mean, it's had a huge run, um, but it had that big uh, gap down on volume on um, June 20th. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, it's had a huge run, and with the gap down, I think there's more risk involved in uh, getting it, getting involved in this name um, at this at these levels. You know, the earnings and, and the sales look great. Uh, institutional sponsorship increases, and uh, oil, you know, has been uh, oil and gas services has been uh, ranked number ten. So you could still try try your hand at this, but I, I think it's getting a bit late in the game. So you know, yeah, maybe be. for a swing trade. You know, it's, yeah, you gone, it's gone basically from 17 all the way up to where it's at now. So it's had a huge run, and I'd be very careful. Yeah, I, I would expect that when you have a pocket pivot like this in this position, you would see more blue on my 13-day uh, you know, force and on the, the daily bongo. I, you would see these as blue if it was really sound, and I don't think it's uh, quite quite there just yet. So um, let's run through some other stocks. Facebook. It kind of smashed to the 50-day moving average, and it bounces off. No real volume here, but back up to the highs is retaking the breakout point. So earnings come out next week. I don't think there's anything you need to do here. I've been keeping an eye on Verant as it comes down. Now you see it pulls down in here to the 65-day, but uh, that's going to coincide with the 10-week line, which is where it's sitting right now. So I'm keeping an eye on that one. Uh, Palo Alto Networks, as I was pointing out, isn't really getting any buying here off the, off of this. Uh, it's off the 65-day exponential, but again, uh, it's probably the 10-week line, and that's what, what it's doing, sitting on the 10-week line right there. If you think about it, when you have this kind of move on the weekly chart in Palo Alto Networks, uh, it's probably entitled to pull back. Earnings aren't until the first week of September. So I am keeping an eye on this. I'm not sure if you're getting a little bit of a white coffee in type of test where the stock's going to pull back towards the 65-day exponential, the 10-week line, and uh, you'll see volume dry up. But you, you might want to keep an eye on that. I think it's still a potentially a leading stock. The way it was hit kind of bothered me, but I was using, I really didn't like the fact that you had this gap up here. It should have held that. That was a viable gap that then failed very quickly. So any stock you bought in here I think should have been sold. I sold my whole position as soon as it did that because that didn't look right to me. And my feeling was if it came back up through this uh, low in, in here, then I could uh, buy it back. And it's just kind of collapsed very quickly. But you can see how last week the selling started on Monday and uh, or earlier in the week. Uh, and and it, it was a very sharp break and by the time you got to Thursday everything was kind of sold out on the downside that's why that opening uh, as I was tweeting I was pointing out in the chat room that opening on Thursday you didn't want to be shorting on that day you wanted to be covering your shorts so uh, feel free to ask questions about any stocks everybody you know Exxon uh, in Trexon is one everybody knows on the chat room I played this coming off of here it had a nice move it looked like it was trying to come out it's, it's trying to come back uh, insiders were buying the uh, seven insiders bought the stock in here off the lows, and I thought that that was interesting. Uh, and so it's trying to come up and out of here. If you look at it on the weekly chart, I know that a few of you guys in the chat room have been playing it. It's it's pretty deep and ugly though. So it's a big ugly, you know, deep uh, double bottom. But I guess you wouldn't say it's late stage. It came public here, so. <clears throat> 
it, it's probably going to need to uh, set up a little bit longer. But I think it had its move off the bottom. A lot of these, Twitter is another one, had a nice move off the bottom. And I was buying it in here as it came up, and I sold over 40. So I got a good uh, you know, 25, 30% move out of that position, and then I blew it out uh, in here as it started to fail on this gap. But you can see it's everything's turning red here. It doesn't look so hot to me, um, and so I'm not really interested in it right now. But it had a nice move for me. And it's one of the stocks that that helped me. Uh, whoops. Let me get this right here. AMRI, Albany Molecular Research. Uh, well, I think if you're going to buy this one, this is a spot to buy it. Is down here when you're having the you see the roundabout pocket pivot here, and it's run up now. It's broken out. You have a breakout here. Uh, at this point here, at the top of the space, cup with a short handle. You pull back to the top of the base once. You're sitting along the 10-day moving average. Uh, it's going. Everything's turning code blue here. So, it, I guess what you'd be looking for is a continuation pocket pivot off of the 10-day line. Earnings come out in the first week of August, so not really clear if there's anything to get excited about there. Somebody asked me, "What is your opinion of Z?" And uh, personally, I don't see any reason to have an opinion. You can just look at the chart and figure out what it's doing. And what it's doing is it, uh, if we look at this, let's shrink it. You can see the stock broke out here, and it has run up. It had, you know, had a couple of uh, breakout fakeouts, and this is this kind of stuff will drive you batty. Breaks out, fails, breaks out, fails, tries to break out, comes back in, then bounces off the 50-day line, and kaboom, you're up and out of here. Now you're way up here. Uh, I think if I had owned this stock, the way it holds the 10-day line, I probably would have sold it here. When, when these things, you see stocks start to to get some upside thrusts along the 10-day line in this market, uh, as soon as they come through it, that usually is where they slow down. And then you'll be able to, if you want to, you could buy them back on a pullback or look for a new pocket pivot to form. But I think in most cases, these things get spent once they come back through the 10-day line. Sun Power is a similar situation, but this is one, if you guys remember, uh, way back in here, I was talking about buying it. It was looking kind of ugly, but volume drying up and the market was turning. And it worked, and, and we had a Bible gap up in the base. I think we also had a pocket pivot in here somewhere right here as it was come, just starting to emerge. You could have gotten in early before the breakout, and then it runs up a good 20% if you bought the breakout. If you bought it down here closer to 30, you're getting 30-plus percent out of it. So for my money, I saw this breakout here. No pocket pivot coming off the 10-day, so I sold it and took my profit on that on the basis of it having a 25-30% move, and I'll do that. Uh, it's not really something that, you know, it's supposedly O'Neill style you do. But in this market, all you're going to end up doing if you try and uh, play longer term trends in most of these stocks, all you're going to do is give up all your profits. That's that's all it really does. Look at, say, GWPH, for example. Harris, you had one, two, three uh, gap ups in the pattern. The third one to me was a little bit too obvious, and I sold into that move. And here it comes. And again, this also points out the the utter futility of trying to use uh, O'Neill's uh, eight-week rule where if a stock goes up 20% or more in two to three weeks after a breakout, you have to hold it eight weeks. If uh, if I had to sit with this stock for eight weeks and I was going to blindly hold it for eight weeks, I think the one danger that you have with this stock that you need to think about, and at least, and I'm not saying it's going to happen, but at least be aware of this, and and that would you know point to... Uh, maintaining your stop on this thing if it fails and not sitting around waiting for it to magically bounce just getting the hell out of there but you can see this is a 50 something percent deep cup here you have a very nice tight handle volume dries up it breaks out you're getting a lot of good volume so i tend to think that institutions are probably buying it up here and uh, it, but it may pull back into the 10 week line earnings come out in the first week of august so again you know if, if you bought it Around, I, I think I bought in between 84, 85, and then as it ran up, again, I had a, a 20, 25, 30% profit in that thing on the third week, so I took it. And uh, stock comes right back in. I tried buying a little back today because the volume's drying up, and this may be where it tries to find the low. But it, again, keep, keep in mind, if you, set a, if you come into this stock, make sure you have a stop and stick to it, because the other aspect here is it could be later stage which means it could break down, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to top, and then form another base, you know, and, and meet up with the 40-week. But 
you don't know if that's going to happen. For sure, that's just a potential scenario if it is a later stage situation. Dr. K, what's your view here? Do you think this, this thing could potentially be kind of late in its move and maybe it needs to build a bigger base or longer base or something like that? What do you think? Well, I mean, um, you know, so far the, the breakout was on uh, good volume and you know, it had that earlier um, high volume update. So it, it still could... Um, you know, have have a little bit more uh, room to go. I mean, I like the stock overall. Yeah. I mean, given its uh, given its fundamentals, um, and you know, it's right now it's in a basing pattern, and it it's had a big run up. You know, base. If you look at the weekly, you'll see how far it's come, and it's a ten bagger already. But uh, I, rather than than dismissing it for having come so far so fast. I rather see it. Um, I prefer to see it actually as uh, something that's setting up to go again. So it needs to base out, and then I'm I'm going to be very interested in this stock um, once it has another pocket pivot on a, a good price volume um, right. actually leading up to that that pivot. Yeah, I'm keeping an eye on this as something I want to buy back, but so far um, nothing really. The volume is drying up on the downside, so maybe uh, either that or it's it's a little bear flag, and it's going to have to test the 50-day in the top of the base first. So. But yeah, this is a situation where I took the profit. I had it, 20 30% profit very quickly in a big position, and I took it. And uh, I'd rather be in th that position uh, than watching my profit dissipate. And I think that happens too often in this market. Code, I noticed, had a pocket pivot today. So you have a little pocket pivot earnings come out. In the, I guess that would be the second or second week of August. I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> but you got a pocket pivot here. And uh, I actually bought this stock in here, and it ran up a little bit. I mean, that's not, I guess it's, it's a decent move, but uh, I didn't hold it for very long. I think I was actually much heavier in uh, GWPH and SunPower at the time and Twitter. Um, but it had a pocket pivot today, uh, George, and so it looks okay. So you can't, you can't fault it. And there are some stocks looking okay. I think a lot of the... The stocks have had big run-ups, so you know they're taking a break, and they deserve to take a break. So the market might chop around sideways. This is a good year. I'm sorry. I mean, a good time of the year for the market to chop around. Uh, I remember last year, Dr. K. If you remember when I went into the hospital between uh, late July and mid-August, when I had my little medical uh, uh, excitement there, and I was uh, not able to really focus on the markets, which was okay because I think the market was chopping around, went through a little correction, and then came out of it right after I got out of the hospital, which was fortuitous. But it seems like late July, early August is generally pretty uh, kind of sloppy and choppy. What's your take on that one? Well, um, you know, the markets uh, have more or less been in the uptrend, but they get into these choppy phases. And, um, you know, if... if if you're asking about uh, you know stocks like AKRX, um, it it had a you know a, a good move from uh, its pocket pivot on June 20th, and it still seems to be in an uptrend. So if you bought it on that pocket pivot, there's nothing wrong with it. It hasn't done right. anything wrong. Um, and you know the the fundamentals look uh, you know more or less intact. You got earnings and sales and accelerating, and the industry group's good at, at 11. Um, and so you know it looks it looks all right to me you know, overall. I'd watch this as kind of a V-shaped move. Let's see, I, I bet you it pulls back in here. So, but like Dr. K said, where, you know, it depends on what your objectives are for the trade, I think. Uh, Replogen, uh, this one's kind of squirrely, but it, you know, it's just hanging up there. Nothing really going on there. Uh, do you like soon? Soon? Do I like it? I don't, it's really not a matter of liking it, but I don't really see any buy points in here. I guess you could say there was a a pop. Whoops, come on. What am I hitting the wrong button on my mouth? I guess you could say there was a pocket pivot here. Um, was that the uh, was that the rebalancing day, Doctor K? Was that what it was, or was it the, this day? I guess. I think so. Um, it's probably about that day. Yeah. I mean, there was that. Yeah. Yeah, actually, if you pull up like um, other charts, you could see um, volume spikes on that day. Uh, that would be the 27th of uh, of June. Okay, yeah, that's what that big volume was about. But you know, it's gone higher since then. 
not by much, but you had a little pullback. If you look at the weekly chart here, um, the base looks uh, okay, I guess. You break out here, so it's finding support closing in the upper part of the, the uh, weekly range. It's only Monday, so this is this bar here is only one day's worth of data, so you can't really pay attention to it. But it, it seems to be, if you look at these up volume weeks, it seems to want to close in the upper part of the weekly range, which looks constructive, even though on the daily chart it's kind of choppy and sloppy. Uh, HZNP, you know, I, I don't know why, but I think of Heinz Ketchup for some reason. Uh, wasn't Heinz, what was, wasn't Heinz HNZ, the old Heinz, is it around anymore? Or did they sell out? I think they sold out to somebody. Uh, I don't like, I hate the stock, which means it's probably going to go higher now, but you've had a bunch of pocket pivots and it goes nowhere. So maybe it, it turns out like Annika Pharmaceuticals, which was going nowhere, and I guess, well, it's still going nowhere. Maybe they go somewhere on earnings, but they don't have a date up here. So one of the rare instances where you won't see an earnings due date. Um, but I don't know, they, these HZNP, the, it doesn't thrill me. It's probably going to have to move on earnings. Uh, Dr. K, have you done any studies on weekly pocket pivots? I, if, I don't understand how you could have a weekly pocket pivot. Uh, if the rule is based on uh, having uh, the highest upside volume or, or highest volume in the last 10 days versus any downside volume uh, or higher yeah, volume. Uh, we, there's, there's nothing I've seen that's uh, definable on weeklies. Um, they're, they'll get you in too late and your risk right. is much higher you know, weekly. The other thing is you're requiring that uh, the stock's volume be higher than any down weekly volume over the prior 10 weeks. I don't know. You, I, I think you're getting too uh, too reverse fractal there, probably. Illumina, Illumina was a buy down here. That's when we put out the alert. And again, another example: stock turns in May, has a great run up to the top. Here's your handle. You break out and it fails. And now you're bopping around in here. It's still hanging in there. If you bought it down here, I don't necessarily see that you have to sell it because it hasn't had a streaking kind of a move to the upside and it's just building a handle but earnings come out next week and let's take a look at the weekly chart always useful to look at the weekly charts I always look at both and I look at them in real time uh, it gives you some perspective um, like I was showing you with with some of those short sale uh, candidates that I hit last week like the Yelp you know this was helpful in giving me some perspective and seeing the stalling action on the weekly charts data was the other for those of you who were late Data was another one, um, uh, Workday was another one, and uh, Spelunk was another one. And you can see all of these almost, they, they look almost identical. And, and a number of them went through the 100 mark, the century mark, uh, and reversed back down through it. Like Data, you know, Workday, Splunk, uh, Yelp, they all did the same thing. They all hit the 100 mark and then boom, right back. And it looks like what we saw in this last correction was uh, a situation where you could have implemented uh, uh, Livermore's century mark rule, which you normally use for buy signals going through a, you know, a century mark like 100, 200, 300, 400, whatnot, for the first time, when a stock does it for the first time. Uh, and then it fails. And remember, Livermore would turn around and go short if a stock failed on a century mark uh, buy signal. And uh, he did that with... Uh, um, what was the railroad, I'm, or the uh, it's copper stock, Anaconda uh, Copper. And uh, it failed at the 300 level, and he shorted, shorted the stock and made a mint. And I noticed all of these stocks, all four of these stocks, you could have shorted them. And I actually did. I remember shorting Yelp when it failed here, and it came down, and it just blasted down to the 50-day or the 10-week. And I thought, oh, boy, that, that's a great trade. I took it. And, of course, stock goes a lot lower. <laughs> In fact, quite a bit. I think the other one also that I hit right off of there was uh, data. And again, that broke down to the 50-day, and you know, you thought I thought that was pretty good, and uh, play it down to there, and then boom, the thing just collapses. Um, you know, so but but you don't know that this is going to happen. You, you, all you know is you get a nice trade, and you get 20 percent, 15, 20 percent very quickly. Uh, you can take it in general, and. Uh, on the short side, and I prefer to do that. But you know, the, the weekly charts give you a good perspective that you need to be uh, look checking out and, and at least be aware of. Somebody says ACH. What is ACH? Security not found. You get hit us again with that. Uh, 
with that symbol, please. Uh, let's see what other ones we're looking at. Um, whoops. Why? Why? Here's one. Uh, bottom fishing pocket pivot. You know, turned off of here, off the ten day. That yeah, that one and it worked. Uh, Wuba was another one. Let's actually go through the uh, the Gilmo buy list. You guys want to do that? This would be exciting. Let's see. Gives me buy. Here we go. This is my buy list. Vinet, 21 Vinet. She's a little uh, Chinese company. I forget what they do. Let's see. I'm sure they have a description here. Operates a carrier as a carrier neutral internet. What, what's, what are the gunshots going off, Dr. K? You don't, are you running alerts or did everything go off? Uh, is it going off now because... Uh, it's aftermarket yeah. stuff. Oh, okay. Um, anyways, this stock had a I think it had a pocket pivot. No, not no, it didn't actually. Um, but anyways, that's one on my list. Let's just go through, cycle through these really quickly. It's already 4:51. Uh, here's Wuba. You know, nice move. It goes to the top of the base. Well, I was talking about it right here on the chat room, uh, and then it had a pocket pivot, and from there it uh, pulled back once and took off. You know, you get that kind of a move that quick, you got to sell it. You got to take profits on that. This hasn't completed. Uh, a, a breakout there runs up to the top of the base to get resistance on the left side from here. So um, let's see. Alexion has been hanging along the 58. This one's tough to figure out. Next week it has earnings. Here's Allison Transmission. Uh, not, not anything going on there. Here's Amazon. You had the pocket pivot on Friday. Bible gap up type pocket pivot. Right through the 200-day moving average. I figured it would do that. Uh, and uh, it's trying to recover. The one thing I notice about Amazon is that uh, if you look at a weekly chart, you've got, uh, well, it looks like one, two, I'm going to say this is three waves of selling to the downside. And it finally turns around. Now it's trying to come up. But it's just a big, ugly pattern. Maybe it heads all the way back to the highs. I don't know. Earnings come out next week as well. Um, and so that's where you are. You know, so that, that is kind of tough to, uh, to buy. Kind of shrink that, and make it look a little, a little more scale, scaled properly. Uh, but you know, off the ten-week line here and coming up through the forty. You like Amazon, Doctor K? No. Not really been into uh, Amazon. You know, it Did came up the, you know, it's through, 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 through that. Um, but you know, the I think I think ultimately, you know, it's a bigger stock, but it's slower. You know, you can just yeah. see like the. the progression of its moves are not what it used to, what they used to be back in the late 90s when it was right. young. So it's not something that really excites me. But, you know, if you've got a, um, a longer time horizon, there are positions where, you, you know, you can buy into the stock. And, you know, the future earnings are looking pretty good. So, you know, it's poking through the 200 day. But, you know, keep in mind, it's, it's not good. It, it's had two gap downs on the last two earnings reports. Um, so I'd be uh, wary about this one. <clears throat> uh, someone's asking uh, if the webinar is going to be archived. It will, we'll send you a link. We usually, uh, assuming we don't have any technical glitches, we record these and we will uh, post the video and send out an email with the link as soon as it's ready. But it takes a little bit of time to process, so maybe a couple hours. So be, be patient there. But if you got to go somewhere, this will be on a video hopefully for you. Uh, ACK, that's the one someone's asking about. Well, you know what? I'm, I want to cycle through. It's 4:54, so we're almost almost done. There's uh, analog kind of sputtering. Annika, Eris. See what I'll do is I'll just fly through this list like this. I Biogen. I, I don't know. Earnings come out next week. It's hard to figure this one. It might just be a big head and shoulders type uh, formation, but we'll see. There's Bonanza. You can see that it's starting to flash a little blue here. You had a Kahuna today. Uh, trying to trying to set up Cavium is a dog. It just you know had a viable gap of. I actually thought this stock had some strong potential, and it just crapped out. Uh, and again, you see how it it runs up along the 10-day. When it breaks there, I'm just gone. I take my profit and go away. And I'm glad I did. Cheetah Mobile, eh. Uh, Simerex Energy, Continental. We talked about that already. But I have my buy watch list, and this is it right now. People are asking me today on the chat room, you know, how do you generate? I run a lot of different screens. I use the screens that are built in on HGS Investor. 
I have other screens I run on Wanda. I look at lists on other uh, web pages like FinViz. Uh, just look at names that are up. I look at IPO lists. And I generate uh, my own uh, buy list. Here's EOG, kind of a pocket pivot, but couldn't get above the 10-day. It is off the 20-day, however. Expedia hanging in there. Uh, this one, Xterran. I think this is a uh, oil and gas pipeline or transporter company like uh, Glog. But Glog got whacked pretty good. There's Facebook. First Solar. It's actually now it's on my short sale list. You notice it broke down and uh, on an intraday basis has violated the 50-day moving average. So I'm watching this. Earnings come out first week of August. Freescale semiconductors trying to hang in there, but nothing going on really. Gas log, you know, the, the, here's the buy point. We put out the alert here again. This is the nice move. You get a very nice move, 20% about, or maybe a little more. Uh, yeah, close to 25 it looks like, right, Dr. K? And, and so, you, you know, you're on this, and I think we put this one out pretty early in the day. Uh, and you get the move, and it breaks out, and then wham, right back into the base. So if you're the, you know, the, the turkey buying the breakout, you, and you sit there, you get to watch your profits uh, disappear. So it's trying to set up the pullback into the 50-day line. It's trying to set up, but you know I'm not so sure. There's Gentherm. Not so sure I want to be in there. Google hanging in there. Greenbrier again. I like it. It's all going code blue. That looks great. Grubhub. I've been watching that one. Nothing going on. That's the index. Uh, GWPH. We talked about that. High High Crush Partners had a nice run up, pulling back. It's probably going to spend time building a base. So nothing to get excited there. Uh, in Trexon, Jazz Pharmaceuticals, you know, here here again, breakout, fail. What else is new? Buy, uh, pocket pivot down in here. So, you know, that was really the place to get in, once again. JD.com, it's not really doing anything. It looked to me like it might set up along the 10-day, and then this is a premature breakout. I actually bought it right here and uh, sold into this move. So that was a nice 10% move in four days. Uh, and then it comes all the way back in and blows apart. Kate Spade, she doesn't want to go anywhere. So pretty blah. Green Mountain doesn't want to go anywhere. King Digital, uh, you know, nice run up. Again, if you bought this, there's a pocket pivot. I think we're in the chat room on this day talking about this one. If you bought it and it runs up like that three days after the pocket pivot and you just it's just up huge and you don't take profits, you're an idiot. Um, I just have to tell it like it is. <clears throat> I remember when I was at uh, working at O'Neill and Company, I was the head of the institutional services department. I was always referred to as a bull in a china shop because I, uh -huh. I, I remember that people riled up because I would tell, you know, I basically tell things the way I saw them. I didn't, I didn't feed anybody any BS, and I told them what I thought. And then, you know, Bill O'Neill said, well, you, you know, you can't be a bull in a china shop. And I remember one of the assistants, one of the lowly assistants in the institutional services department said to me, you know, the problem, Gil, isn't that you're a bull. The problem is that this place is a china shop. And uh, and I, I thought that was very, uh, very uh, observant of this person because, you know, you're a brokerage, you're running, you got people handling uh, clients in the markets, you can't be a wimp. So the fact that everybody's feelings were so easily hurt there. I never saw so many prima donnas in one place in my life, I have to admit. But I won't get into that. Anyways, Pacific Ethanol. Yeah, it was, it was intriguing because uh, the way the way I heard about you before I met you was uh, you got to watch out for this guy. I heard all this negative thing, and um, you know, even at that point, I I just had this gut feeling. Uh, you know, if everyone doesn't like someone, then I want to know that person. I probably want to <laughs> like that person. <laughs> well, that's the, you, the well, deal was, uh, uh, was very political that. there. You know, it was very yeah. political. People, there are a lot of there's a lot of mediocrity there that's intent on preserving their position at that in that organization, and that's what happens. But right. I, you know, I don't, don't I know that? Yeah, <laughs> how did, no, I mean, yeah, how yeah, I got exactly. the position so, position so trading for O'Neill. <laughs> but again, like like the assistant said, it's like you know people say you're a bull in a china shop. The problem isn't that you you're a bull. The problem is that this place is a china shop, and I thought that was very uh, very observant. Anyways. Uh, very deep. Uh, here you got Sanchez Energy pulls all the way back to the 50-day line. Do you want to buy it here? Go for it. First week of August, we'll see earnings. Uh, Schlumberger, Skyworks hanging out. I, I can't say that I see anything here that gets my blood boiling. I see a couple little pocket pivots. You see the code and whatnot. But other than that, Spirit hanging in there. Yeah, a lot of things are just kind of hanging in. And not really going anywhere. So I think you know you might be able to wait a little while and wait for the 
the setups to ripen or just wait to see how earnings uh, progress. Here we have Charles Schwab. This had a nice pocket pivot here, but running up and, and uh, jacking around and, and coming back. Trinity, I like Twitter. That's probably going to have to be taken off there. VIP Shops, YY, Zebra, Zillow. Uh, I, I think, you know, for those of you who've done these sort of stock hunting webinars with me before, you'll notice when I go through my list, I can find some stocks that I can have some conviction about in terms of buying, and I can't really, I don't really see that right now. Either you're hanging with stuff that's pulling back and you've got some profit cushion you can work with, or you sold into a nice profit and you're looking to redeploy. And I really think that's where you are uh, right now. Let's go back to all securities. I can look at all names. I was noticing, uh, what is that? Zero to five high yield corporate bond fund. That one always comes up first. Um, let's see, any other questions? Tell me, so what happened to 720p with last posting of webinar? Not sure what you're talking about, Ken, but I think you were the one who emailed about the resolution or something, and nobody else had that problem with the with the video, just so you know. So it's probably something on your end. It's that cheap internet you're buying, or you have. You know, that $14.99 a month stuff just doesn't cut it. Um, or it could be a setting. So anyways, let's see. Um, I'm going to rip through some questions. we got a few more minutes. We'll see when my wife calls me downstairs for dinner. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, NXPI, RFMD is one. Hanging along the 10-day. I guess you could say this is a pocket pivot here, but it's not really going anywhere. NXPI is another one that's hanging out. But you see, with earnings coming up, my guess is most of these consolidations are where stocks are holding up tight. They're not going to resolve themselves until earnings come out. So I don't need to be there, my, my view is. I, know I don't really care to play earnings roulette. Uh, given my style, because I like to hold big positions, and I rather jam it and be up, you know, mid double digits for the year, and having my best first half of the year in my 25 years as a trader, as an investor, having my best first half of the year in 2014 is pretty good feeling. But the other part of that uh, is that historically, you make most of your money in the second half of the year, right, Dr. K? Yeah, that's a. Uh generally been the case yeah although sometimes you get the exceptions of you know the first quarter can be fantastic you know but yeah I generally saying that the, the heavier weighted stuff is uh, toward the end of the year yeah so that which gets me excited because if I'm doing this well at this point then if I don't screw everything up I should be able to do very well and hopefully knock wood uh, hopefully do triple digits so somebody asked me Gil are you gonna watch the market and tweet while on vacation I might but I really wasn't planning on watching the market too much. My my thinking is it's going to be pretty uh, sideways. Now, if I do my, I'll do my homework and run my screens every evening when we get back from whatever our vacation activities are, and I will run my screens and uh, and I'll take a look. If there's something setting up, I don't have a problem taking a position. Uh, don't have to take a big one, and uh, I have an iPhone, which is basically a tiny little. PC, right, Dr. K? And you can you can do what you need to do there. So, yeah, it's fantastic. Everybody just take a week finest. off and have a blast. East or West Tennessee, uh, Middle Tennessee, and up we're going up into Kentucky as well, into the uh, Mammoth uh, Caves uh, Park, which I'm really looking forward to. That looks really interesting. We'll see what kind of uh, internet connection I get there. Anyways, let's see more questions here. SLXP. Uh, the gap, Bible gap up failed uh, of, of la a week or so, a couple weeks ago, I guess. And uh, holding along the 10-day now, but nothing really exciting. So, yeah, I'm getting a lot of people advising me to take the week off and uh, take some time off. So, uh, my wife would probably like me to do that. But, you know, I, I am what I do to a large extent, and I will be checking the markets, and if I see anything, I'll definitely be uh, emailing Dr. K about putting out alerts, like we always go back and forth anyway, so we're never really out of touch, even when we're out of touch. Well, except for that one time you got stuck in an elevator in London, <laughs> and, and yeah, you couldn't find you for a while, and that was pretty, that yeah, kind of had people freaked out, but, and then the other time you got stuck on a plane, I guess, somewhere, uh, anyways. Uh, in at Blackberry yeah, Farm East Central. Actually, we were okay. so bored on the plane uh, because the air traffic controller couldn't get everything sorted out, and we were there for like what? How many hours? Yeah. Oh. 
I yeah, love this. Hopefully that uh, doesn't ever happen again. <laughs> somebody says, rest the brain, come back fresh, be a pig, not a hog. Uh, thanks, everyone. <laughs> I'll still be on the chat room probably from time to time. Probably on, on Wednesday I'll be uh, watching stuff from the hotel room. So, um, And we have family in, in Nashville, so you know we'll be coming by. Anyways, um, do I have anything else? I'm looking through my list real quick. Oh, GTAP, you know, we talked about this one. Uh, again, I think a good lesson in, in Dr. K's rule, heavy volume gap down move, don't hesitate, just sell it at the opening. And if you did, you would have gotten close, out closer to 18, uh, you know, and, uh, and save yourself a fair bit of pain because this thing came down hard. But I guess they got some issues here, um, unfortunately. So somebody also says they like Dr. K charting under the influence. Yeah, he's actually pretty insightful. You get a couple of martinis in him, and he's pretty insightful, dude. <laughs> Aren't we all? Or is it because I've got a couple of martinis in me? I don't know. Um, anyway, must be symbiotic. <laughs> uh, what else? What else? Oh, let's G Pro. We're gonna, we'll shut down in a little bit here. We don't need to. Whoops. G Pro, just an IPO because they had a nice run up and coming in hard. Ooh. Oof. <laughs> Might be some cocaine. I don't think that's the, anything Dr. K gets involved with. So, let's see. Gilead. Uh, each zone. Not my thing, though. <laughs> no, it's basically poison, so. Well, not only that, it fucks up with your neurotransmitters, so anyone who does it just is uh, looking for a big train wreck ahead. <clears throat> The cold, no allergies, no. Who cares? Anyways, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't really see anything else that has my blood boiling here. Silica Holdings hanging along the 10-day, but you know, just looking at stuff, nothing really uh, has me thrilled. And like I was pointing out earlier, let's go to uh, where did I do? Let's go to the indexes. You can see the S&P 1500 index here. You're showing, you're seeing the pullback here after a move to new highs. Okay. And this is the broader market, and the broader market is not rebounding the way you're seeing the NASDAQ or the S&P. So under the surface, things are kind of lukewarm. But even like I said, that's okay. Let the market take some time here and digest and see if it, if it doesn't top or roll over, which, you know, we'll be on top of. The market direction model is on neutral, correct, Dr. K? Yeah, for now. And do you think, uh, let's say if for some reason you make a new high in the index, you just uh, flip back to a, a buy signal? Well, you know, it'll probably switch back to a buy signal. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the S and P is pretty close, um, but yeah, it's most likely because you know this uh, QE force is in effect, and the uh, the the massacre of the leaders that we saw over the two eight eight period doesn't seem to be um, continuing. So you know, the model's ready to switch back to a buy signal sooner than later. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. But sometimes yeah. it's better to be safe than sorry, you know, because we could have eas we could easily get a replay of what we saw in March and April, as well. So you know, it wants to be you know, right now the 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 market average is only corrected about one to two percent. So it's a very scant correction with the potential to correct more than that. But right now it's looking like the averages are trying to um, you know, find the floor and and move higher. Yeah. And that, of course, makes it a very challenging, you know, environment as we saw, you know, over the last couple of years. Yeah. Like very. Sometimes the corrections only go for, you know, one to three percent, and then the market just goes right back up. Right. Somebody says they just got on. It's eight o'clock on EDT. Actually, I'm looking at this. Uh, it says quite clearly after hours VOSI market webinar scheduled for um, Monday, July 14th at. Uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. So, <clears throat> anyways, should we assume that this session takes place at the regular weekly market hours webinar? Yeah, I would. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to have the kind of internet I want to have to do a, a webinar later in the week. But I also think that it's better right now, given the state of the market after the heavy sell-off at the beginning of last week, and that's some sort of recovery. It's better to be covering what's going on here now in terms of what we're seeing. And I think the bottom line is that. You know, it looks a little soft, but it doesn't necessarily look like it's the end of the world. You might see some rotation in here, and you got to be alert to that. I think uh, I'm happy having taken profits after a number of my stocks ran up 
15, 20, 25 percent or more and let them hang out. I'll go on vacation and see what happens uh, uh, when I get back. So anyways, uh, those asking about how they listen to the recording, we'll send out a link in a couple hours once we've processed the video and you can check it out. In the meantime, look, if you have any questions, feel free to email us. Dr. K doesn't go on the chat room. I do, and I announce my hours. Uh, probably, I might go on early tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, but yeah, you I can always email Dr. K. On, uh, the other uh, other parts of cyberspace, um, well, and you know, I, I I've been okay with dealing with that. But for compliance reasons, I really encourage you to just email me directly um, on info at or support at virtual self investing. Dot com. Right. Um, don't email him directly. Otherwise, he's. I don't. I mean, we get into these long, very long discussions on YouTube and on Facebook, and it's just not really. Um, I it it costs, costs a lot of my time. First of all, to get you know, you have to remember that you know you're not the only person I'm talking to. I'm talking to thousands of people. Okay. So when you consume that much of my time, I mean, ask me. You know, there's one case where the guy was asking me more than 40 questions, and I had Holy to put a stop. To it. I'm like, wait a minute. This is really not not fair to other people because you're consuming my time. You're absolutely monopolizing my time, and you know I I mean I'm I'm a bit emotional about it because I'm just like wait do you not understand that you're not the only person on this planet? So keep keep it to support at virtualselfishinvesting.com and um, and then we can all see the questions and we can all answer it in time. With yeah, us. and I can chime in as well. Otherwise, if you're just hammering Dr. K, uh, you're going to piss him off as you can see and. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind helping people, but like you know, at some point it was like, okay, this guy's really like you know milking it. Oh, well, that's you know, and not, he's not considerate of other, other people as well. So yeah. you know. <laughs> Anyways, on that note, everybody, you know where to find us, or you know where you can find us, and I'll see you guys on the. Uh... Oh, somebody says, "Gee, if only my patients would understand that." He's a doctor, and. Ha uh... <laughs> Good yes. point, Brad. Yeah, I mean, it's it's how it is. People get. Uh, in fact, I remember one guy got a hold of my uh, my AIM uh, address, and he was peppering me with questions every five minutes. You know, and I had to basically block him after a while because it just got kind of ridiculous. It's like, what do you think I'm doing here? Just sitting here waiting for you to instant message me so I can answer your questions. But you know, whatever. That, that, that's the downside of having to uh, deal with the, all kinds of people as we do. The upside is that you meet a lot of great people. And I, as I yeah, look at the names of the part, attendees right. uh, here, there are a number of them, and some many I've met personally, and they're all great people, and that's the upside. The downside is when people hassle Dr. Kana, and you have to listen to him rant. <laughs> but, you know, I think people ultimately want, want the best, you know, so all you have to do is just, you know, put them, <laughs> make, them make them aware, and, that, and then everything's fine. All right, well, I think you made your point pretty well, and I think people will remember that, at least those who are on this webinar. Anyways, you guys... We're going to shut down. Uh, thanks for showing up, and thanks for wishing me a great vacation. I'll be in the chat room now from time to time over the next week, and we'll see what happens. If something big happens in the market, I plan on being there. So uh, thanks for showing up, as always, and we'll catch you guys next time. Have a good trading week. So long, everyone.